Good morning. Pastor John here from New Life Church in Owaka, Washington, and this is the message for Sunday, March 27, 2022. I'm really glad that you've joined us today. I'm not planning to be uh, very long in what we talk about this morning. In fact, I think that the concepts that we're going to talk about today are fairly simple, fairly easy to understand, but because it's easy doesn't mean that it doesn't have a complexity as far as application. And that's really what I want us to focus on today. Because what you do with this message, no matter how simple it is, really comes down to your obedience to the Holy Spirit. And whether or not you're going to listen to the Holy Spirit, whether or not you're going to engage in what He is telling you to do. And I don't want you to dismiss that. I want you to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. It is vitally important that you obey and trust Him. If He's given you resources, if He's equipped you to accomplish certain things, then I think it's imperative that you are a good steward of those gifts and those talents and those resources, and that you put them into service for the kingdom of God. So to begin this morning, I want to remind you of these words from Jesus. They come from Matthew uh, chapter 22, starting in verse 36. In verse 36, uh, Jesus was asked, says, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all of the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So Jesus is asked here, what is the most important commandment? Out of all the commandments, Jesus, which one is the most important? And since Jesus was there when the commandments were written, I think that he would have a pretty good idea what the most important one is. And Jesus keeps it so simple. He says, love the Lord. Love the Lord with everything you have. Everything that makes you, you. Your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, your purpose. All of the things that make you, you. Love the Lord with all of that. But then Jesus gives us a second commandment that he says is equally important. Did you hear that? He says the second one is equally important, to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I want you to consider that for just a second. Jesus just told us that loving our neighbor is equally important to loving God. I want to share an old story with you. You've, you've probably heard this story before. Uh, it's, a, it's about a, an old man, and uh, he, he walks down the beach every morning. Uh, he's been doing it for the last 10 years. It's part of his retirement. He, he goes out, he walks down the beach. And one particular morning, as he's walking down the beach, he spots a, a young boy who is crouched by the water and he is scooping something up from the sand and throwing it into the ocean. Now the beach is normally empty this time of the morning when the old man is, is going for his morning walk and so he stops and he watches this young man for several minutes as he takes a few steps, he stops, he scoops something up and he throws it into the ocean. Well, he notices the boy doing this for a while, and finally he, he walks over to him, and he says, Hey, son, what are, you, what are you doing there? And the little boy responds, I'm saving starfish. See, they're, they're here on the beach, and if they stay here, when the sun comes out, they're going to dry up and die. So I'm putting them back in the ocean so they can live. The old man kind of ponders this for a second, and he looks at the kid, and, and he says, Son, on this stretch of beach alone, there has to be more than a hundred starfish. And around the next corner, 
there's probably another hundred. And then on this stretch of beach, when you put it all together, there, there may be a, a thousand more. This goes on for miles. I've been walking this beach every day for the last 10 years, and I see these starfish all the time. It, it's always the same. There, there's millions of them that wash up in here, and they're stranded, and they die. You're never going to make a difference. The little boy doesn't even hesitate. He picks up a starfish, and he throws it in the ocean. He looks at the old man, and he says, I just made a difference for that one. And he continued on his way. In Scripture, we actually find an example of Jesus doing almost the exact same thing. In Mark chapter 5, uh, starting in verse 1, it says, So they arrived at the other side of the lake, that's the Sea of Galilee, in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, he would often, uh, he would often break them and snap the chains from his wrist and smash the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night, he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek, he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion because there are many of us inside this man. Then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of swine that were feeding on a hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man, entered the pigs, the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs, plunged down a steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what was happening. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what had happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and pigs, and the crowd begged Jesus to go away and leave them alone. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, no, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region. And he began to proclaim the great things that Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. And then verse 21 says, Jesus got into the boat and again went back to the other side of the lake. Hang on a second. In this story from the book of Mark, we actually see that Jesus travels across the Sea of Galilee. To rescue one man from a demonic infestation and then he literally crosses the sea back to the other side Jesus went out of his way to rescue one guy he made a difference for that one if I were to ask you this morning if you love the Lord with all your heart mind and soul what would your answer be I know a lot of you, and I think most of you would be introspective, and you would come to the conclusion that you certainly love the Lord. Now, some of you would probably need less than a second to even think about it. It would just come out, yeah, I love the Lord. Others of you, you might think about all of the things that he's done for you, and you might think about how he rescued you or how he restored you, how he saved you, and you say, yeah, I love the Lord, and all, after all the things that he's done for me, how could I not? 
And some of you would say very quickly, yes, I love the Lord with all my heart, all my mind, and all my soul. Yes, absolutely, because that's how love works. I love the Lord. But the second commandment is equally as important. Do you love your neighbor? Ooh, ooh, pastor. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah yes, I, yes, it's equally important. I love my neighbor. Let's pause for just a minute. Because when I ask you if you love the Lord, most of you are able to answer that without hesitation. But the second commandment is as equally important. Do you love your neighbor? Do you love your neighbor as yourself? How many of you know someone right now who has a need? Maybe it's a physical need. Maybe they need food, or shelter, clothing. Maybe it's an emotional need. Maybe they need encouragement or a hug. Maybe, like uh, the demon-possessed man in the garrisons, maybe they need deliverance. Maybe it's deliverance from drugs or alcohol or some other form of addiction or possibly even a demonic infestation. Do you know someone right now that's in need? Do you have a friend or a family member who's hurting? Do they need support? Do they need encouragement? Would they benefit from a visit with you? Right now, I want you to focus on just that one person or that one family that you know that's in need. Maybe that person is, is right, right there in your community. It's, it's somebody who's nearby, somebody you see every day. Maybe that person is somebody that you go to a church with that you think they're here, they're happy, they're, they know that the Lord loves them, but maybe they're walking through something right now that's created a particular challenge for them. Perhaps it's a, a single mom or possibly a, a widow or even an orphan who's in your church. Maybe the person you're thinking about is some distance away, maybe all the way on the other side of the lake. Maybe it would take travel for you to get from where you are right now to that person. And now I'm gonna tell you something. And I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I want you to hear me. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. That's everything that makes you you. Love your neighbor is equally as important. That neighbor that you have that's in need you need to do something about that. And you need to do something about it right now. No, I'm serious. If I asked you if you love the Lord, most of you would quickly, quickly respond, yes, sir. But do you love your neighbor? Well, right now, you know someone who is in need. They need a minister. Oh, that's easy, Pastor. I'll give them your name. I'll give them your phone number. I'll give you their address. Not quite how this works. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us, us, this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us, there's that word again, this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we, collectively, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. I'll give, I'll give you their address, Pastor. No. That's not how this works. God rescued you. So you have new life in him. You were once a starfish that someone else threw back into the sea. And now it's your responsibility to rescue someone else the same way. That person that you were thinking about just a minute ago, I want you to think about him again right now. How can you be a minister to that person this week? 
How can you meet their need? Well, if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, with every talent, resource, and gift he's given you, he made you for a purpose. If you love him, it's time to put that purpose into action. Because the second commandment is equally as important. Love your neighbor as yourself. God gave you those resources so that you can be a minister to all those other starfish all the way down the beach. And you, may, you can't save them all, but you can save one. You can save the next one. That person that's hurting right now, be a minister to them today. Be a minister to them this week. Obey the Holy Spirit and put your love into action. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for all who've watched today. And I ask that your word enter our hearts and grow into something powerful and strong. Remind us of all the gifts that you have already given us. Show us how to be a good steward of those gifts by being a minister to others. In the same way that someone once rescued us, let us be able to rescue someone this week and see them reconciled to you, Lord Jesus. Father, I ask for courage for those to move, to do what you've called them to do. I ask for that you equip them and resource them and provision them so that they can accomplish your will in their life and advance the purposes of your kingdom. And Father, I ask that your kingdom can, can continue to grow and be something that it blesses many people. And, and let this thing just grow in echelon as we understand that it's not just about loving you, but that loving you also means loving our neighbor. Give us the wisdom to put this into practice this week. Let us be able to apply your word to our life. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today, and I hope that you'll be back with us next week. And I hope that next week it includes a testimony of all of the amazing things that God has done this week through you on your mission to save all those starfish. <laughs>